You were my creator, my inventor, my designer. God made you. No one else but God made you and each one of us. In verse 14, I praise you because of the wonderful way you created me. Everything you do is marvelous. Napakaganda ng kaliwanagan itong umawit na ito kasi talagang alam niya at kinikilala niyang siya ilikha ng Diyos at ang Diyos ay hindi lumilikha ng anumang hindi wonderful or less than wonderful. God composed you wonderfully. Kahit hindi ka uso sa specific place and time, wonderful ka. Alam niyo kung ano yung wonderful, ano yung, kung ano yung maganda, kung ano yung kaakit-akit, kaibig-ibig, depende-depende yan sa panahon. Sa ibang lugar, kaakit-akit ang napakaputi na balat. Sa ibang lugar, kaakit-akit yung napakaitim. Iba-ibang uri ng kaakit-akit, iba-iba uri ng maganda. Depende kung nasa lugar mo ikaw at nasa panahon. May mga panahon na ganitong usong buhok. May mga panahon na pag tinignan mo yung picture mo 20 years ago, gusto mong mandiri. Kasi iba na yung maganda ngayon sa maganda noon. So lahat ng tao, tama, maganda, ayos, wonderful, kaya lang, nasa tamang oras at panahon ba siya? Depende sa nagpapauso. Kasi may nagpapauso kung ano maganda eh. Nung araw, lahat ng magaganda, yung mga mistisa lang, yung mga mapuputi lang, yung mga straight lang ang buhok. Kasi sila lang nun ang mapera. Kaya lahat ng produktong nililika para sa kanila. So ang mga modelong nagtitinda ng mga produktong yun, yung kamuka nila o yung gusto nilang maging kamuka. Pero nung yumama na mga asyano, ngayon marami na mga asyanong models. Nung may mga yumama na, na mga colored people, dumami na yung mga colored na models kasi may economic power sila. So ang totoo nun, yung mayaman, maganda. Kasi siya ang nagdidikta kung ano ang maganda. Huwag tayong paapi sa mga ideya ng iba kung ano maganda kasi maganda ka, nilika ka ng Diyos. Baka hindi ka lang ang pinapauso ngayon ng mga produkto, ng mga magazine kasi wala silang itinitinda para sa'yo o para sa yung economic capacity. Pero walang nilika ang Diyos na pangit. Kasi Diyos ang manlilika, alam nga namang mali siya. Kahit hindi ikaw, ang bet ng mga judges sa contest na sinalihan mo, sumali ka uli next year, iba na yung judges, baka manalo ka na. Di ba? Maraming ganun mga karanasan, natalo nung minsan, na sumali uli, nanalo na, kasi iba na yung judges. So, pag may nagja-judge sa'yo, so, mm, ikaw lang kasi ang judge. Pag may ibang judge, siguradong wonderful ako. Depende yan eh. Psalm 139, 15-16 Nothing about me is hidden from you. Ang kausap dito, Diyos. But with your own eyes, you saw my body being formed. Even before I was born, you had written in your book everything I would do. Unti-unti pa lang akong nabubuo o sa sinapupunan ng aking ina, nanonood na kayo, O Lord. Kayo kasi may likha sa akin. Alam nyo ang nilikha nyo at alam nyo kung anong pupuntahan ang nililikha nyo. Kaya nandun pa lang ako at nalilikha, alam nyo na ang landas na tatahakin ko sa buhay. Itinakda nyo na ako magiging ano ako. Kaya nililikha nyo ako na maging magaling sa math. Siguro gusto nyo ako maging engineer. Itinatakda nyo na na ginagawa nyo ako magaling sa musika. Siguro gusto nyo akong kumanta sa church o kumanta kung saan saan. Kasi gano'n nyo ako nilikha, therefore gano'n ang kalooban nyo para sa akin, kaya alam nyo na kung anong pupuntahan ko. Kasi hindi ko naman pwedeng hindi puntahan yung nakatakda. Kung saan nakahapay ang kahoy, doon bubwal, sabi na matatanda. Ang pinakamahirap sa buhay ay yung lumalaban ka sa yung hilig, hindi mo sinusunod ang yung hilig, yung design sa'yo ng Diyos, kaya tuloy hindi ka mag-excel. God designed and predetermined your general personality your general direction in life. Kaya nga pati sa psychology, na-profile na nila ang mga tao, yung mga temperaments daw. May sanguine, merong phlegmatic, merong choleric, merong melancholic. Generally, ang mga tao magpo-fall under those four big categories. Kasi talaga may categories. Merong kingdom, merong phylum, merong class, may family, may species, may subspecies. Meron talagang ganun. So God designed your destiny. But not the specifics. Halimbawa, dinesign ka niya na magaling sa musika, hindi naman siya ang nagdikta kung 
kakanta ka ba, tutugtog, o kung kaya lang kakakanta, yung details na yun, nasa sa'yo ng kalooban at sa mga nangyayari sa yung paligid at may influence sa'yo mga tao nga sa yung mundo, pero in general direction, Diyos na ang nagtakda niyan. So yung free will na tinatawag, yung change, that is possible only within the inborn nature. Free ka lang within how you were created. So halimbawa, you were created na ang height mo is below whatever, below 5 feet or below 6 feet or whatever the standard. So may mga bagay na hindi mo pwedeng gawin kasi hindi yun ang height requirement na mamimit mo. Mahirap naman siyempre yung stewardess ka tapos 3 feet ang height. Kasi hindi mo maaabot yung mga unan doon sa ibabaw. Diba? Pero kung gusto mong sumali halimbawa sa Navy, gusto mong magtrabaho sa loob ng submarine, hindi pwede yung six-footer kasi uuntog ka. Maliliit ang mga pinto doon. So bagay naman doon yung hindi masyadong matatangkad. Kanya-kanya. You are free to operate within the context of how you were created. So ikaw ay cactus, free kang tumubo at lumabay at mamulaklak sa mga tuyo na paligid. Water lily ka, water plant ka, doon ka sa mga, mga matubig na lugar. So kung nasa tamang lugar ka, ikaw yung magpa-flourish. Kaya hindi nagpa-flourish yung mga tao nasa maling profesyon, nasa maling linya, nasa maling trabaho, hindi sila talaga magiging number one doon. Magiging second rate, kapikat lang sila. Pag hindi sila faithful to the original intent that God expressly gave to them as they were designed. Kaya maraming interpretation yung personality, yung sino ba ako. Sa Romans 7, 18 to 15, I know that my selfish desires won't let me do anything that is good. Sabi ni Paul. Even when I want to do right, I cannot. Instead of doing what I know is right, I do wrong. The sin that lives in me is what does them. This is a very interesting study. Huh? Either Paul really believed in what he was saying or he was leading his readers into an inevitable conclusion as they follow the train of thought. But here, this is the sentiment of legalistic, mosaic religiosity. Pag conservative, legalistic, makamoses ka sa yung paniniwala, ganun ang pagtingin mo sa yung sarili. Alipin ka ng kasalanan, bilanggo ka ng kasalanan, hindi mo kayang gumawa ng mabuti, lagi kang mali, lagi kang guilty. And Paul calls his inborn nature sin. Sinful nature, selfish desire, wrong, evil. At ang bunga nito sa kanya o sa mga tinuturuan niya, guilt. Because Paul demonizes his unchangeable inborn nature. Sinasabi niya, wala akong magawang mabuti. Lahat ang ginagawa ko mali. Kahit si ko gumawa ng tama, hindi pwede. Gusto kong bumait, pero di ko magawa. So napakasama ko. Alipin ako ng kasalanan. So ano nagiging bunga nun? He demonizes his unchangeable inborn nature. Siya na rin naman may sabi, hindi pwede palitan to. Kahit ano gawin ko, hindi mapalitan. Like many religious people, demonize what is natural. Napakauso sa marami mga conservative religious sentiments to demonize desire. Samatala yung desire is inborn, innate, in the physical body. Your desire for food, cease to eat that you get to eat. Your desire even for sexual activity, cease to eat that there is procreation among the human race. Kasi mahirap yata yung sexual activity. Na kung hindi yan desirable, nobody will do it kasi nakapagod. So, minamasama lahat yan ng mga makamoses, ng mga conservative religiosities. At yan ang ine-essay ni Paul sa kanyang mga katuroan. Kung talagang naniniwala siya doon, o device lang niya yun para pumunta sa gusto niyang tumbukin na usapan, that is known only to him. Romans 7, 21-23, sa pagpapatuloy ni Paul, The law has shown me that something in me keeps me from doing what I know is right. But in every part of me, I discover something fighting against my mind. And it makes me a prisoner of sin that controls everything I do. So sinasabi niya, mayroong isang batas na umiiral sa aking kalooban, sa kaibutura ng aking puso, na nagsasabi sa akin kung anong tama. Pero 
bawat bahagi ng aking katawan, kinakalaban yung tama na iniisip ko kasi ang gusto ng katawan kong gawin, yung mali. So anong bunga niyan? Nagiging bilanggo ako ng kasalanan. Paul was talking about the contradiction between what he knew was right and what his body naturally does. Sabi niya, malinaw sa aking isip, na ako lang ibig sabihin ni Paul ito, malinaw sa aking paniniwala, malinaw sa ang kinagis ng katuruan, malinaw sa nakasaksak sa utak ko na standard of what is right and wrong, malinaw doon kung anong tama. Pero pag tinignan ko ang bawat bahagi ng aking katawan at ginagawa ko araw-araw, yung mali ang ginagawa ko. So may gera, yung iniisip ko at pinaniniwalaan kung tama at dapat sa katotohanan ng buhay ko na totoong nangyayari. Paul's natural self and mind and belief about what is right fight each other. So there was constantly a warfare because there is a warfare mindset. Alam niyo yung mga na lahian, na bahira, na turuan ng conservative religiosity influenced by the hatred of the Greeks to anything material or that belongs to the body because they only want the spiritual world. Anything like that, laging naka-warfare mindset. Kalaban ng aking espiritu ang aking tiyan na matakaw. Kalaban ng aking espiritu ang aking katawan na gusto magpahinga at masarapan. Kalaban ng aking kabanalan ng aking mga sexual appetites. Laging pinaglalaban yan. This is very Greek, which influenced many New Testament Christians and even Old Testament Jews. Ang bunga ng ganitong pag-iisip, stress, and of course, inevitable defeat. Lagi kang talo. Kasi, Minamasama mo yung natural, eh yung natural lang laging mananalo dahil yun ang natural. So yung ideya mo, your concept of spiritual perfection, your concept of an achievable morality will always lose. So you will be divided, you will be confused. That's why many religious people are depressed. Kasi depressive isipin na lagi kang talo. Pero kung magiging totoo ka sa sarili, if you judge yourself according to the standards of religious morality, lagi ka talagang talo. Here, Paul equates the law with what is good and therefore with God. And then he equates his nature as sinful and therefore bad. That's why he calls himself evil. And if you are in that kind of thinking, you will call everyone else evil. Because everyone else will fail by the standards that are in your mind. And even in their own minds. Kaya maraming religious systems nakadevelop ng coping mechanism dyan eh. Confession. Total, lagi mo rin namang ginagawa. Bibigyan kita ng way out of guilt. Confession. At naging malaking negosyo rin yung confession na yan. Kasi ang mga tao, kahit sa mong iloblob na relihiyon, pare-pareho lang yan ang gagawin at iisipin araw-araw kahit ano pa ang relihiyon nila. And since Paul observes that this sinful nature prevails anyway, he thus considers himself a prisoner of sin. Is that how you consider yourself? A prisoner of sin? A hopeless sinner? Laging loser? Laging guilty? Laging masama? Kay mga ibang tao, sasabihin nila, pasensya, tao lang. This tao lang, can be positive. It could be a way out of guilt. It could be a coping mechanism. But it could also be negative. When you say tao lang in the sense na tao lang ako, therefore talo talaga, therefore masama talaga, samantalang sinasabi ng Psalm, I am wonderfully made. So pag sabi mong tao lang ako, to mean talagang masama ako, marumi ako, eh, di hindi totoo that you were wonderfully made. So Paul problematizes what controls him the way he was designed, his nature. And when you problematize your own nature, you will have a lifelong problem because your nature will never leave you because you are your natural self. Paul fights his nature and destiny. Therefore, it will be a lifelong stress. Romans 7, 24. What a miserable person I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is doomed to die? That is why I was proposing that we look at Paul two different ways. One, 
Did he believe in what he was saying that he was really inherently evil and hopeless? Or he was engineering the discussion to get to the heart of the matter yung pag ganyan ang pag-iisip mo pag ginadjudge mo ang sarili mo sinusukat mo ang sarili mo by these religious standards miserable ka at dahil miserable ka sinong wakakapagligtas sa iyo sa misery na yan and of course Paul was driving at Jesus he was bringing the topic to Jesus he was making you know and feel that you're helpless so that you will look for help in the right place and that is in Jesus ang galing niya magsulat Paul thinks he fails miserably. Of course, he would think that if he really believed in what he was saying. But what if he was saying that, not because he believed in it, but because that was the belief of his readers. And going along with the discussion of Paul, it is inevitable for you to end at his prescription, Jesus. Na yun ang sagot sa hopelessness mo. Paul realizes his salvation, Jesus, which really is Jesusness. See, Jesus, the person, Jesusness is the ideal, the whole teaching, the whole essence and spirit that was revealed in Jesus. And it is possible that Jesusness could be revealed, could be expressed, could be understood and enjoyed even in the context outside of Israel, outside of Christianity, because Jesusness is the idea and it can live in anybody. So may Jesusness then sa mga non-born again Christians. Kahit yung mga tinatawag ng mga pagans, yung mga tinatawag ng mga unbelievers, unchurched, when they love, when they are loving, when they are forgiving and accepting, meron silang Jesusness. Although probably formally and legally, wala sila nung formal religion na Christianity. Kaya mahalagang ma-separate sa utak ng tao yung Christianity itself as a religion and Jesus and Jesusness. Because Jesusness can be experienced outside of Christianity. Because God loves all people. God reveals to all people. Kaya nakikita nyo ba? Kahit kaya naging born again Christian, naging committed sa evangelical, Bible-based Christianity, ang dami nyo makikita ka mag-anak nyo na hindi nyo kasama sa church pero ang buti ng ugali. May Jesus na sila. At marami kayong makikita sa church na hindi Jesus na ang ugali. Impact on us. Kahit pa sila born again at inilublub mo ilang beses sa baptism, may impact on us pa rin. So it is possible for Jesus na to thrive outside of formal religion. Siyempre, press release lang ng mga religion sa kanila lang may salvation. Para doon ka mag-member at doon ka mag-ambag. Pero pa, pwede bang ikulong ang Jesusness sa wall ng church, ng anumang relihiyon? That's why it's important to understand the spirit of Jesusness. Jesus is the person. Jesusness is the idea, the spirit of God revealed in the person of Jesus. And that same idea could be revealed elsewhere, in other times, in other places. Other people can also experience the love of God kahit hindi sila narating ng mga Christian missionaries. Yung franchise ng missions, yung franchise ng mga churches and religions, press release lang yon para mas solo nila ang mga converts. But the Spirit of God fills heaven and earth. The earth belongs to the Lord. Hindi pwedeng dumating lang ang Diyos sa Pilipinas kasama ni Magjela noong 1521. Siyempre, yung Spirit of Jesusness had always been with the people who are loving, who are caring, who are forgiving, and accepting. And that spirit saves. That spirit, that mentality, that understanding will bring you into the presence of God with or without formal religion. Hindi naman kasi pwedeng masolo ng relihiyon ng Diyos. Naunaan Diyos sa relihiyon. Yung mga relihiyon, mga franchises yan, mga licenses, mga pag-aangkin sa Diyos. Pero hindi paangkin ang Diyos kahit kaninong religion. Kaya importante maintindihan natin the spirit of Jesusness that was in Jesus. Because it can also live in you, it can live in other people. So, yung sinasabi ni Paul na napakasama ako, wala akong pag-asa. Is it a Pauline belief? A Pauline teaching? Or just a Pauline device to drive his readers and his listeners to the inescapable conclusion that outside of Jesus, 
They will only be in Moses. They will only be in legalistic religiosity. They will always be condemned. But clearly, Paul believed and taught grace. Paul believed and taught life through Jesus. And he very clearly also taught death through Moses, through the law. Sa lahat ng nagsulat dyan sa collection ng New Testament, napakalinaw ng pagkakaunawa ni Paul sa binigay ng Diyos na kaligtasan sa mga tao through Jesus and Jesusness. Now, the general essence and direction of individual personality is predetermined by unique inborn traits. Balik tayo sa yung natural self mo. Yan kaya ang tinatawag nila na genetic configurations na talagang ikaw ay ikaw. Yung sinasabi na matatandang ang mangga ay hindi mamumunga ng santol na madalas ay tinitingnan nila ang magiging ugali mo pag tinignan nila ugali na yung magulang at mga ninuno. There is a basic foundation that determines the general design. And only details and finer points could be altered or improved. Nilikha ka, yun ka na. So, sabi nga, even before I speak, you know what I will say, you know my thoughts. Kasi yung lumikha sa'yo, alam niya ang design, therefore alam niya ang yung tendency. Alam niya kung ano ang yung magiging hilig. So, nililikha pa lang ikaw ng Diyos, alam na niya, nako, itong nililikha ko na to, lagi itong magkakakanta. Magtutugtog. Kasi ito ang pagkakalikha ko sa kanya eh. Itong nililikha ko na ito, magiging ano ito, scientist. Kasi nililikha ko siyang maging ganyan. Ito magiging charitable. Ito magiging matipid ito. Magiging laging siya yung save. Ito naman magiging gastador to. Ganon. So, kaya lang pag naging mag-asawa yung dalawa, World War III. Pero, hindi na yan naiiba. Pastor, i-counsel niyo po ang asawa ko para magbago. Magpalit ka na lang ng asawa, mas madali. Kesa palitan mo yung ugali ng asawa mo. Eh, ayoko po magpalit ng asawa. Yung pala, di tanggapin mo. Pero huwag kang may asawa, tas pinipilit mong ibahin. Magiging magulo buhay mo, magiging magulo ka rin sa kanya, magkakagulo-gulo kayo. Yan na yan, as is, where is. Mag-adapt ka, mag-adjust ka dyan. Intelligent people adjust. Kasi, hindi naman nababago ang tao. Mito lang yun. Eh bakit po nung naborn again yung isang pinsa ko, bigla nagbago? Pag-usapan natin yan maya-maya. Itanong mo ka nung nangyari after six months. That is why Psalm 139 verse 4 says, Before I even speak a word, you know what I will say. Kasi kilala ka ng Diyos. Hmm, pagka ganito, magagalit yan. Pagka ganito sinabi mo, papautangin ka niyan. Alam ko eh, alam ko ugali niyan. Ganito siya. At pag pinagsama-sama mo lahat yung mga nilikha ko na yan, magkakaroon ng kumpletong pamilya, kumpletong community, magiging colorful and beautiful. Gusto mo ba lahat ng kasama mo, kamukha mo, kaugali mo? Kaya nga sa church, iba-iba yung gift na binigay para pag nagsasama-sama tayo, kumpleto rekado. Alam nga naman ang luto, puro bawang. Siyempre, gusto mo mag may bawang si Buyas Kamatis. Para masaya. Ganun ang buhay. Iba-iba ng papel. How come children from the same parents could be so different? Pagka may kilala kang isang tao, hangang-hanga ka, gustong-gusto mo siya. Nung makita mo yung kapatid, sabi mo, ay, paano naging magkapatid yun? O kaya meron naman isang taong diring-diri ka sa kanya, yung hindi mo siya maintindihan. Nung makita mo yung kapatid, wow, biglang hanga ka. Kasi hindi lahat ang magkakapatid pare-pareho. How come children could be so different from their own parents? Genes, ang sagot ng science dyan. Sabi na matatanda, lahe, dugo. Kasi, nananalay tayo sa ugat mo, nasa dugo mo, nasa every single cell of your body, yung genes ng lahat ng mga lolo at lola mo, both sides, sa father's side and mother's side, pabalik kay Adan at Eba, nasa iyo yan. Ngayon, kung kaninong ilong ang mananalo at lalabas dito sa isang kapatid mo, Diyos lang ang nag-assign nun. Kaya may mga magkakapatid na magkakaiba ng ilong. Mayroong magkakaiba ng buhok, may kulot, mayroong straight, mayroong magkakaiba ng talent. 
Kasi ang dami niyong lolo at lola na pagkukunan, nagkocombine-combine, nagsasama-sama sa isang tao, nagiging individual tuloy siya. But all human traits and character could come only from the genetic pool, from design, from creation, from God. Nothing was added to creation after the sixth day. You know what happened? After the sixth day, on the seventh day, the Lord rested. Tumigil na ang creation. Tumigil na ang creative process. So, ibig sabihin, after the sixth day, nandun na lahat ang genetic pool ng lahat ng tao sa lahat ng panahon. Creation stopped. And after creation stopped, recreation na lang ang nangyari. Nagkakakombi-kombinasyon. Kaya kahit sa dalawang taong Adan at Eva, biglang nagkaroon ng may maiti, may maputi, may dilaw, may kulot, may straight. Kasi nasa kanila na mismong katawan lahat ang genes ng buong sangkatauhan na habang may mga nagsasamang lalaki at babaeng nakakakreate sila ng isang bagong individual, namimili lang ang Diyos kung alin pipita si na gene, alin dito, alin doon at ilalagay sa individual na ito. Kaya ikaw yon and you are wonderfully made. Paul talks about that. At napakarami pa sa Bible, directly and indirectly. Now, plant and animal hybrids can be created by crossbreeding. Alam nyo yon Nakakita na ba kayo ng Bougainvillea na ang bulaklak sa isang tangkay, may violet, may dilaw, may pula? Kasi pinagsama-sama ng crossbreeders, ng plant breeders, yung mga genes ng iba't ibang bulaklak na may iba't ibang kulay. Nakakreate ng ibang individual. Crossbreeding. Plant and animal hybrids can be created by conditioning na tinatawag ng iba na evolution. Sa pagtagal ng panahon, lagi kang nasa tubig, lagi kang nakasa tubig, nakadevelop tuloy ng gills yung mga animals sa pang tubig. But that's already in creation. Wala namang gyera dapat ang creation at evolution. Kasi after creation, puro na recreation, recombination, reconfiguration. Kaya yung mga nagtatrabaho lang bawa sa mga toll gate na nag-aabot ng tiket, nagbabayad, kung pagtatrabuhin mo siya dyan ng 300,000 years, hahaba ang kanang kamay. O kaliwa, para madali niyang maabot. Siyempre nag-a-adjust ang creation na tinatawag nila na evolution. Galing din yun sa Diyos. Hindi yung kontra. Nag-a-adjust lahat. Tinyo yung halaman. Nakaha- paso. Nakaharap na ganyan lagi sa araw yan. Subukan yung italikod yung paso. Bukas, unti-unting lumilingon uli yung mga dahon patungo sa halaman. ba? Diba? Mamaya isang linggo, nakaharap na sila uling lahat. Ikaw naman sa dista, inikot man na naman yung paso. So yung halaman, pagod na pagod ka adjust, pero babalik at babalik yan kung saan siya nakakakuha ng araw. Iyon, e all in one day, all in one week, nakaka-adjust. Padaanin mo pa ang libong taon. People adjust. All new traits are actually old, except that they were not visible at once. Yun ang tinatawag nila kung na recessive genes. Nananalo yung dominant genes, pero kapapalit-palit ng mga kombinasyones, lalabas din sila. Lahat ng evolution, mutations, reconfigurations could have only come from the same genetic pool because God created everything. Except that not each and every one of those creations were visible all at once at the same time. May panapanahon na lalabas yun. Kaya wala namang dapat gyera yung creation and evolution. Lawakan mo lang yung pananaw. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. At dapat i-consider mo that sometimes Bible language is poetic. Literary creation yan. Hindi ka naman dapat laging literal para ma-accommodate mo yung mga sinasabi ng reason, even ng science. So everything and everyone in all combinations and reconfigurations must have pre-existed invisibly until they were made visible. Nandun na yan, hindi palang lagi visible. Tulad na isang bata, Kumisan yung isang bata, straight na straight ang buhok. Pagkasilang, pagkatapos, pagka nag na 9, 10 years old na, sumusimula nang kumulot. Sabi mo, ayan, lumalabas tayo ang buhok ng ama. Meron naman nung isilang, kulot-kulot, nung nagiging teenager, tumawid yung buhok. Kasi dati nang nandun yung tuwid na buhok na yon, kaya lang ang nakalabas pa lang sa simula yung kulot. It takes time for reality to manifest itself in the material world. 
Kumisan ang lusog-lusog, tapos pag nag-30 years old, ayan, lumalabas na yung sakit ng ama. Ang ama kasi niya, nung 30, nagkaroon na ng sakit. Pero hindi laging lumalabas agad. Yung mga ganyang katotohanan, pre-existed invisibly until they were incarnated. Like the Word, Jesus pre-existed in the spiritual realm before the incarnation. Pero hindi ko mo, hindi pa lumalabas siya. In the body, ibig sabihin, wala siya. Nandun siya sa ibang dimension. Pero pag niloob ng Diyos na ilabas na sa ating physical, earthly dimension, doon pa lang natin nakikita. Ephesians 1.4 Even before He made the world, even before He made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in His eyes. So sabi, bago pa na ang mundo, nasa isip na ng Diyos, ikaw, kinirate ka na niya, kaya lang hindi ka pa sumusuplot sa mundo. Parang si Jesus who was a word, in the beginning was the word, but then later on became flesh, ikaw din nag-pre-exist ka na sa isip ng Diyos. At doon pa lang, banal ka na. Malinis ka na, mahal ka na niya. Kaya lang later on, nung pinanganak ka, na-develop ang mga civilization, ginawa kang demonyo ng mga relihiyon, pinasama ka ng mga man-made doctrines para kailanganin mo ang relihiyon, para kalinisin at maibalik ka sa Diyos. Yun naman tinuturo na relihiyon, di ba? Masama ka, mali ka, marumi ka, pero mag-member ka sa amin, ibabaptize ka namin, mag-tight ka sa amin, lilinis ka uli, babalik ka sa Diyos. Tinyo yung press release. But before the foundation of the world, before religions develop, God already knew about you and God already made you holy in His sight. Until religion condemned people so that religion could be the sole dispenser of salvation. Palawakin ng pagkakaunawa sa Diyos. Huwag siyang ikulong sa religious walls. Marami kasing ganyan. Pinipilit kang ibahin, baguhin ang religion para lagi kang kulang, para lagi kang ambag ng ambag, guilty ng guilty, confess ng confess, hanggang kamatayan mo na yon. Hindi mo na maaabot yung kagustuhan mong contentment with yourself. Jeremiah 13.23 Can you ever change and do what's right? And even if so, what is right? Whose standard is right? Can people change the color of their skin? Or can a leopard remove its spots? Of course. The prophet knew the answer. No. I cannot change and do what is right by your standard. I cannot change the color of my skin. If I'm a leopard, I cannot remove my spots. If so, sabi ni Jeremiah, then maybe you can change and learn to do right. The obvious answer is no. By the law, you can never do right. You will always be wrong. By the law, you can never change. You will always be hopeless and evil and needy of religious service. No one could and should be expected to change their God-given nature just to suit some man-made philosophy or theology, just to suit some man-made concepts of what is good and what is bad. Kasi kahit naman mga religions of the world, major religions of the world, may pagkakaiba-iba pa rin sila ng concept of what is good or bad. It is bad to kill. Yes, kill your karelihiyon. But it is good to go religious war and you will be rewarded by God. Ano yun? Kitang-kita natin yung pagmanipulate ng tao sa religious thought to benefit a certain society, a certain civilization, or a certain religious group. Kinakawawa ng majority ang minority, pinapakonform. And because the majority control religion, yung mga minority kawawa, they are made to feel evil, less, and they are made to feel like outsiders. Kinakawawa ng powerful ang weak. Di na dominate. Kaya maraming inventors ng doctrines, ng concepts of what right and wrong. Civilizations, ancient religions promote doctrines that serve their interest. This is social engineering. So it is all right to kill people who don't belong to our tribe. It is all right to people, kill people who don't belong to our religion. It is all right to dispossess people of their lands. Dahil gusto ng Diyos atin tong land na to. Do you think God will really do that? So sabihin ng Diyos, kill the women, kill the children, kill everybody and get the land? O press release ng land grabbers. And they say, sabi yan ng Diyos. Ang Diyos ba naman na napakabuti at papagmahal? Ibibigay sa'yo yung 
nandun at pag-aari ng iba, tapos sabihin, patayin mo siya para maging sayo. You should critic even religious thought. Titingnan mo, sino nagbe-benefit sa teaching na to? Sino yung na-empower? Sino na disempower And you will begin to know if it's man-made or not. Because many religions develop not really as a revelation from God, but as a social tool for engineering and social control. Study history. Kung paano na-develop ang mga religions. Siyempre, lahat yan ikiklaim. Bumaba ang Diyos, kinausap yung kanilang founder. Pero sabi ng Diyos, patayin mo yung iba para maging sa iyo yung tinitira nila. Ganun. Maniniwala ka dun. Matthew 15, 8-9 These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. This is Jesus speaking and quoting even Isaiah 29:13. Sabi ng Diyos, hanggang bibig lang ang pagsamba sa akin ng mga relihiyones na yan. Malayo sa akin ang puso nila. Baliwala ang pagsamba nila sa akin kasi ang katuroan nila, imbento lang nila para sila ang mag-benefit. Jeremiah 14:14. 14, 14. Then the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, false divinations, idolatries, and the delusions of their own minds. Punong-puno na ang Diyos sa mga kabalbala ng mga propeta, mga katuroan na sila lang ang nakikinabang, kaya ipinadala niya si Jesus. Liwanag para liwanagan ng madilim Daan para buksan ang nakasarang daan Siya ang kapayapaan dahil naguguluhan ng mga tao Siya ang kapahingahan dahil pagod na pagod na ang mga tao Sa pagpapahirap sa kanila ng religious doctrines Kaya ipinadala And in Him the fullness of the deity lived in bodily form There is no name given under heaven by which men are to be saved But by the name of Jesus because it is Jesus that reveals the true heart of the Father. Because the Father had been so misrepresented by religions for so many generations that people no longer knew God. They only knew the image, the false image of God created by religions. Kaya ipinadala si Jesus. That's why it's important to go back to basic Jesusness instead of just generalized religion or generalized Christianity. Go back to the heart of the matter. And that is Jesus. So despite the false prophets and teachers, despite what they say about you, accept yourself and others as God created you and as God willed that you would be acceptable to Him. And since the people had been misguided, Jesus was sent to guide them back to the reality that the Father loves us. And if we have been condemned by ourselves and by our traditions and our previous knowledge, then God forgives us and you forgive yourself. And you get on with life. Do not reject people's realities because of invented religious teachings. Yung un-Jesus teachings. Nakita nyo yung un-Jesus teaching? Ito ang babae, nahuling nagkakasala, batayin hanggang mama, batuhin hanggang mamatay. That is the Moses teaching. Pero hindi siya ipinabato ni Jesus. Sabi niya, yung wala kasalanan, mawalang bumato. In other words, hindi siya ipinabato. That is Jesus. Ibang iba. So dapat malinaw ang pagkakaunawa natin kay Jesus, huwag natin siyang ihalo sa iba. Kasi ipinadala siya. Sitting at the right hand of the Father, continuously interceding for His people. Accept yourself and others. And if you want to improve, that's good. But improve and change within your natural limits. You cannot be who you are not. Do not deny your truth just because some religious myths tell you that you are bad. Do not problematize and struggle with your truth. Yung mga truth natin, ano ba totoo tungkol sa inyo talaga? Do not struggle with it because God made you. You were conditioned probably by culture, by tradition, by religion, by philosophy to think that you are not good, that you are bad. But God created you. Look at your innate, natural self. Siyempre maraming nadagdag sa ating sarili, bukod doon sa inborn. Yun ang pwedeng palitan, pwedeng ayusin, pero yung basic inborn, Accept it, live with it, be happy with it because you were made by God. Do not burden yourself and do not burden others with impossible demands for change. Anong sabi ni Jesus tungkol sa Sabbath? 
Hirap na hirap na ang mga tao sa pagsunod sa Sabbath. Naging amo nila ang Sabbath. Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Sabi niya. Ginawa niyo ang Diyos ang Sabbath, pambihira naman kayo. Pagod na pagod na kayo sa pagsunod, nahihirapan na kayo. Gusto niyo nang gumaling, pero bukas na lang kasi Sabbath ngayon. Gusto niyo kumain, hindi kayo kakain dahil Sabbath ngayon, hindi kayo pwede magsaing o magluto. Gusto niyo mamasyal, hindi kayo makapamasyal dahil Sabbath ngayon. Sabi niya, Sabbath was made for man. Not man for the Sabbath. It is for your welfare. Not to make your life miserable. And apply that, extend that to religion. Religion is to set people free, not imprison them. Religion is for man, not against man. Not man for religion. Pero baligtad, ang 99% ng umaandar sa utak ng mga tao, nai-enslave sila ng system. Do not let oppressive and discriminatory standards and laws dictated by the majority, by the powerful, enslave you. Do not submit to groups that demonize your reality. Sasali ka, tapos walang ginawa kung hindi kastiguhin ka, sabihin masama ka, mali ka, pagiltihin ka, eh ba't ka sasali? Ba't mo papahirapan ang sarili mo? Kaya nga si Jesus, nagtuturo outside of the temple, not inside. Si John the Baptist, nagbabautis mo sa labas ang temple, not inside. Dahil naaapi nga yung mga tao doon sa loob eh. Jesus accepts and loves you before the world began. Word ka pa lang, hindi ka pa flesh. God already knew you, configured you and loved you, and gave you value and calling. Nasa hangin ka pa lang, sabi nga ng matatanda, may itinakda ng mission para sa'yo ang Diyos. May purpose ang iyong buhay. May pagtawag sa'yo at binigyan ka niya ng mga kakayahan para yung mga pagtawag sa'yo ay maganap mo at magkaroon ng kabuluhan ng pagdaan mo dito sa lupa. Hindi dumadaan ka lang na hindi ka nag-enjoy, hindi ka na-enjoy ng iba, walang nangyari. Ephesians 2.10 For we are God's handwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Hindi ka pa isinisilang may assignment ka na. May papel ka na. May kabuluhan ka na. Kasali ka na. Kaya lang maraming katuruan sa paligid na bumubulag sa atin doon, making us feel bad for who we are, guilty for who we are, and making us and forcing us to copy other people because we think they are the standard. Hindi ka pa'y sinisilang, minahal ka na ng Diyos. Nakatakda na ang dapat mong tahakin na landas. Kaya dapat malaman mo kung sino ka at matahak mo ang dapat mong landas para magkaroon ng kabuluhan ng buhay. Mahal ka ng Diyos, nilikha ka niya, tapos mamasamayin ka ng system kasi lang divergent ka. Gusto kasi nila lahat magkakamuka para madaling kontrolin. Ganun lang yun. Accept and love others and yourself, especially for your inborn natural traits. Now, paano yung pagbabago? Paano yung pag-i-improve? Kasali rin yun. There are inborn and natural and therefore unchangeable traits. Don't even attempt to change that. But there are traits that can be changed. May mga asal, ugali, gawain na pwede mag-improve. Suriin natin kung alin. Matthew 9, 11-12. Si Jesus ang nagtuturo. Jesus replied, Not everyone can accept this word, but only those to whom it has been given. So this is a warning. Jesus was saying, I'm going to teach you something very important, but something not easy to understand. It can be understood only to whom it is given, only to whom it is revealed. Hindi sinabing ipagdadamot ng Diyos ang kahulugan. Ang ibig sabihin lang, pumwesto ka para tumanggap ka rin, lumagi ka sa tama, ibukas mong yung isip para maintindihan mo itong ituturo ko sa'yo na mahirap tanggapin sa mga nakasarang utak. Sabi niya, not everyone can accept this word, but only to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs who were born that way. These are certain types of people. There are eunuchs who were born that way. So Jesus is saying, there are types of persons who are born that way. Hindi nila nilikahan sarili nila. Hindi sila nag-decide maging that way. They were born that way. And there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others. O naging eunuch lang yan ngayon kasi na-condition. Napilipit, dinala doon. 
there are types of persons who were manipulated to become the person that they are now. And then there are those who choose to live like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. So there are the types of persons who are like that personal choice. Sabi nga nun, tatlong uri ang tao ha, yung basic pagkataon niya. Merong born that way. Hindi siya ang nagpasya, hindi siya ang gumawa. Diyos, born that way. Meron naman, iba siya, born another way, but raised in a way that subverted the original design. Nurture. Ninurture siyang maging ganito. Pinilit siyang maging ganito. Pinilipit siyang maging ganon. So ngayon, pilipit siya. Hindi siya talaga yan. Napilipit lang siya. So pwede mo yung tanggalin ang pagkapilipit, pero mahirap, masakit at matagal, pero pwedeng baguhin yan kasi hindi naman siya born that way. Eh. And then there are those who are there, who are like that because they choose to be like that. So, ganyan siya kasi pinili niya. Therefore, pwede ngayon din, ara mismo, palitan niya yung sarili niya kasi pwede siyang pumalit kasi pinili lang niya. Eh. So pwede siyang pumili ng iba naman. And the one who can accept this, sabi niya, so should accept it. So according to Jesus, people are what they are because of nature, inborn, because of nurture, conditioning, and because of choice, it is their free will that operated. So despite religious experience, sa kabila ng isang katerbang pagkaborn again, pagbabasa ng Bible, pag-aten ako ano-ano mga seminar at mga religion, born this way, people cannot and will not change unto the idealized, but to them is an unnatural persona. Kahit anong lublub sa relihiyon ang gawin mo sa isang tao, yung born that way will not be changed. Hindi siya mababago. Napaka-unfair at napaka-lupit. Expectan mo siyang magbago, palitan yung inborn nature, dahil lang na-born again siya. Dahil natural should not mean normal. Normal means only the majority. It's common and usual. Pero may mga tao na yung natural nila is the abnormal, meaning hindi sila katulad ng nakararami, minority sila, uncommon, unusual. Pero yun ang natural nila, born that way. Cruel yung sasabihin mo, hoy, born again ka na, dapat magbago ka na. Meron mga, hoy, born again ka na, naninigarilyo ka pa rin. Yung pala, acquired yun eh, na-addict na siya. So kahit siya kumain ng pages ng Bible, secret pa rin siya na yung negrilyo. Kasi it is an acquired behavior. Hindi yun born that way ha, kasi hindi naman siya pinanganak na yung negrilyo. Pero na-acquire, naging habit, na-nurture, it can be changed. But only when re-nurtured, re-oriented, retrained. It takes time. So huwag mong expect na born again lang siya ngayon, iba na siya bukas. Hindi applicable yung, born, yung mga ganyang expectations sa mga born this way. Those who were pressured dahil ang ina-expect ng lahat ng mga church bullies, Hoy, born again ka na, dapat ganito ka na, dapat ganito ka na, biglang naging ganyan na siya. Na-pressure lang yon. Posing as changed would only backslide. Kaya yung mga dali-daling pinagte-testimony, nagbago po ako, wala ang tinagka po ang Panginoon. Palakpakan ng mga tao, buong luhaan at duguan nila, pinapalakpakan. Tapos two months from now, magbabackslide. Pagchichismisan nila. Kasi pinuwersa lang ng expectation na mag-testify at magbago. Yung pala, emotional trip lang niya yung pagbabago. Pero yung born that way niya, hindi kaya ang baguhin nyo ng kahit ilang baptismo. Pagkatapos, iko-condemn siya ng church na kahapon lang yung nagbubunyi sa kanyang testimony. Pinuwersa kasi siya magbunyi at mag-testify sa isang bagay na napilitan lang pala siya. Now, people who are made eunuchs by others, the second type, conditioned, nurtured people could change as we were saying, but only by effective reorientation and through a long process. So kung meron siyang learned behavior, now considered sinful or wrong, pwede yun ma-unlearn by living in the opposite type of behavior for a long time para ma-deprogram siya. Learned behavior can be unlearned, conditioned can be, could be reconditioned, oriented could be reoriented. Ito yung mga pwedeng, ay, binabago na siya ng Diyos. Work in progress. Pwede yon. So may mga naboborn again, tumatanggap sa Panginoon na hindi nagbabago kasi inborn. Meron namang nagbabago kasi acquired and learned behavior lang. Pwede palitan by re-education. 
This could so easily revert also to acquired persona, pwede rin siya mag-backslide. Kasi habit, force of habit. So huwag ka masyadong cruel sa na tinatawag na nagbabackslide. Now, the third type, people whose affected personalities were chosen by them could choose to change. Yun yung nagpasya po ako na sumulod sa Diyos at baguhin ang aking buhay. Kaya mong gawin yun because once upon a time, nagpasya ka rin na ganyan ang gawin mong buhay. Choice mo. So pwede mo rin palitan by choice. This change could be quick and sustainable at yan yung dali-daling itinetestify ng iba. Kaya hindi tayo mahilig magpa-testify kasi maraming tao na papasubo. Pagkatapos, pag hindi na nila napanindigan yung testimony nila, lalapain sila ng the same church na nagbubunyi nung nagtetestify sila. So yun yung talagang pwedeng binago na talaga. I have decided to follow Jesus. Kasi kaya mong desisyonan. Pero hindi ka pwedeng sumunod sa isang bagay na against your inborn nature. Magkukonwari ka lang. Magpapanggap ka lang para aproban at palakpakan ka ng mga tao. At yun ang ayaw na ayaw ni Jesus, yung pagbabalat kayo. Hypocrisy. Importante na maintindihan yung tatlong nature na pwedeng palitan. Inborn nature, acquired, na hindi na talaga nature kasi acquired lang, yun ang pwedeng palitan. At yung decided lang, pwedeng to decide against it and to choose another. Jesus, Jesusness, sets people free from wrong-headed expectations. From judgment, from rejection, and from stress. Why will you judge someone if God made him that way? Romans 7, 24-25. Kaya ang ending ni Paul to sa kanyang thesis, What a wretched man I am! Gusto kong bumayat, pero di ko magawa. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So yun ang ending ni Paul. So yung kahit anong gawin ko, masama ako, mali ako, buti na lang may Jesus na nagsasabing, Hoy, guni-guni mo lang na mali ka. If you were born that way, God made you that way, di hindi ka mali. Pero, may mga mali ka talaga because you were nurtured to be that way, then you can reorient yourself. Pagsikapan mo, tutulungan ka lang Diyos para bumalik ka sa true inborn nature mo at umalis ka dyan sa na-influence ka lang. At kung yung ginawa mo, choice mo lang gumawa ng mali, you can easily choose to do what is right. Jesus sets us free to be ourselves. To be free from expectation against your natural self and to be free from all the pollution and all the manipulation done by misnurture and to be free from all the wrong things that happen because of our wrong choices. So accept, appreciate, celebrate how God created you and every other person, not only you. Do not fight with the Maker to conform to man-made standards and expectations. Sa Bible mismo, sinabi ng Diyos, huwag kayong makinig sa kanila, imbento ang mga katuroan nila. Paano niyo malalaman ko alin sa ating mga religious beliefs ang imbento lang pala hindi galing sa Diyos? Salain niyo kay Jesus, kaya may mahalagang Jesus filter, kaya may Jesusness. Lahat ng turo ng lahat ng tao, lahat ng nilikha ng Diyos, lahat ng mga mga ngaral, salain kay Jesus. Kasi si Jesus lang ang the way, the truth, and the life. Siya lang ang tunay na anak ng Diyos. Siya lang ang tunay na nagsakatawang tao, na salita, na berbo. At sinabi ng Panginoon, ang Ama sa Langit, This is my Son with whom I am pleased. Obey Him. Ano man ang nakatira dyan sa utak niyong religious concept of what is right and wrong, who is right or wrong, salain kay Jesus. Siya lang ang standard. At sa Kanya lang tayo lalaya. Sa Kanya lang tayo magkakaroon ng kapahingahan at sa Kanya lang tayo magkakaroon ng kapayapaan. Huwag tayo makipag-away sa Diyos. Yung mga hindi kontento sa kanilang sarili, ginadjudge ang sarili nila dahil ginadjudge sila ng reliyon. Go back to Jesus and ask, Jesus, ano ba ito? In more nature ko ba ito? It must be. Kasi three days old pa lang ako, alam ko ganito na ako. Hindi ko ito pinili. In fact, marami kong ginawa para ibahin ito, pero hindi na iba. So this must be my inborn nature. I should stop quarreling with you and with myself. Isaiah 45, 9-11 Woe to those who quarrel with their maker. Those who are nothing but potsherds among the potsherds on the ground. 
Does the clay say to the potter, What are you making? Does your work say, The potter has no hands? Woe to the one who says to the father, What have you begotten? Or to a mother, What have you brought to birth? This is what the Lord says, Do you question me? Or give me orders about the work of my hands? Delikaya ng Diyos. Kayong mga ina, mga ama, more than anyone else, kayong nakakaalam kung ang anak nyo born that way. Isinilang pa lang, nandun pa lamang sa crib, alam nyo na, may ganitong ugali, may ganun, ganitong karakter, alam nyo born that way, tapos pipilipitin nyo, papatayin nyo buong buhay para maiba. Kayong saksi kung paano siya ipinanganak na hindi pinili ng bata na maging ganun siya. That's why yung mga magulang, magpakamagulang. Sabi, huwag kayong makipag-away sa ama. Siya ang lumikha. Who or what is your natural self? Suriin na natin mga sarili natin. Inaaway nyo ba ang sarili nyo? Inaaway nyo ang Diyos? Inaaway nyo yung iba? No, you're born that way nature. Accept it. Thrive in it. Enjoy it. Know your nurture na- character and re-nurture. If it is not in conformity with Jesusness, know the choices you have made about yourself and make other choices if the choices you have made before are not in conformity with Jesusness. But if they were, continue to choose that way. At tanong din, what is your kapwa tao's natural self? Your husband or wife? Your son or daughter? Your father or mother? Your sister or brother? Your friends? sila din likha ng Diyos. Sa bawat isa, merong born that way na ugali at pagkatao, meron namang nurture lang at meron namang choice lang. So, tatlong uri ng operation. Do not expect yung mga born that way na magbago tulad ng mga taong who chose to be that way or who were just nurtured to be that way. What needless struggles and stress do people go through as they force themselves and others to suit man-made religious and social ideals. God sent His Son to set us free. Matthew 11:28 to 30, Samya, Come to me, all of you who are tired and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. My yoke is easy, my burden is light, and you will find rest for your souls. Yun ang gusto ni Jesus para sa atin, rest. So stop contending with your Creator and stop contending with your kapwa creation. If Jesus teaches us to love even our enemies, surely we can more easily love our non-enemies, others, even ourselves, who were born this way or who, may, who were made that way by others who were, or who were made that way by their own choices. Dear God, teach us to assess ourselves, to know kung anong dapat namin tanggapin sa aming pagkatao at pagkatao na aming kapwa. Kung anong pwede namin improve in according to Jesusness. Anong pwede namin palitan kasi pinili lang naman namin. Therefore, pwede namin piliing palitan. Ipakita mo sa amin kung paano kami nagiging malupit sa kapwa by insisting that they become what we think they should be. Maging sa aming sarili, nagiging malupit din kami. Set us free from these mindsets. Liwanagan mo ang aming isip. Dalin mo kami sa tuwid at tamang daan. At pairalin mo ang Jesusness in our lives. Pagbulay-bulayan natin sumandali at tumalab sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay.